I don't know. I don't know.
Good morning. Who else do I have in line? This is Audra. Good morning. Josh is here. Yeah, Hi, Josh. How's hey, it going? Joe. Good morning. Good morning. Is everyone uh, ready? Any any hiccups that we need to address before we get started? Nope, do not believe so. Okay. Awesome. So I think you got my run of show document. I think I'll take um, about three, maybe four minutes maximum at the start just to introduce everyone and um, let folks know how um, the webinar is going to be operated and then um, hand it over to you. Actually, so I didn't get to see the run of show doc when we tried to download it, it like presented us for authentication, but I assume that's just in the beginning you're going to go over some material before we start, um, before you hand it off to us. Right, yes. So I'm planning to start, I'm going to maybe start around 10.01, 10.02. I'd like to stay as close to 10 o'clock as we can, but definitely still give people a few minutes to trickle in and then take three or four minutes to launch the, to explain um, what we're doing, um, introduce you two and um, say our thank yous and um, also uh, run those two quick polls. So, okay, I think I, I had, uh, in terms of what I had here, it was pretty much the intro, um, then the intro with us, then it was the poll questions, followed by our presentation and demos, um, then Q&A, and then basically the conclusion, right? Right, right. Um, let's see. Um, and the other notes I came up with, um, the Q&A box is going to have to be open the whole time. I can't control that on on the Zoom end, uh, but we do not, but I'm just going to let folks know that we're not going to be addressing those until the end. Um, the chat box will be open for the first few minutes for everyone to kind of introduce themselves. And then after the your presentation starts, I'm going to make it so that the chat box only shows to um, the three of us. That way, if folks have difficulties hearing or um, whatever is going on, then we can communicate that without um, disrupting the rest of the view. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and begin the broadcast so that uh, the webinar can be opened, but we'll all be, I think we'll all be muted um, momentarily. Here I go. Okay, so the chat box is now open. Oops. Are you guys hearing an echo or was it just me? I do not hear. I do hear a small echo there. Okay, I hear the echo now. Okay, I'm gonna testing, testing. That sounds Any great. Echo? Okay, great. And you two sound great as well.
Good morning, everyone. Um, please raise your hand or enter something into the chat box um, if you're having difficulties. We're going to wait about two more minutes to let folks trickle in, and then we'll get started. Okay, good morning, everyone. I hope you all can hear me. Um, please use that chat box if you come up with any issues as we proceed over the next 90 minutes. Um, welcome to Aparo's first webinar. Um, this is SharePoint Basics uh, presented by our friends at Microsoft. Um, Joe Davis, or sorry, <laughs> Joe Miller and Josh Davis are gonna be our presenters today, our panelists. Uh, and they are support escalation engineers at Microsoft, and they've offered to uh, take some time out of their morning to walk us through SharePoint. Um, for those of you who have never been to uh, Nonprofit Insights with Aparo before, um, our goal here is just to connect you all with opportunities to um, touch on software, touch on technology that you otherwise might not have easy access to. Um, so we do hope that you enjoy this. Um, couple of notes about participating actively in the webinar today. Um, the chat box is currently open now to everyone, so anything that you uh, would like to share with all, you can go ahead and do that now in the chat box. And then once the panelists get started, um, that chat box will close to just uh, myself as the host and our panelists. So if you have any issues that you're experiencing, you can type those into the chat box. Um, the Q&A box is also available to you. And that um, is going to be open throughout. However, we will address the questions that come up through the Q&A um, at the end during those last 30 minutes. Uh, to begin, uh, I have two quick polls that I am going to launch. Um, and this is my first time using a Zoom tool, so it might be a little clunky if you could give me a minute. But um, the first poll I'm going to launch is just to ask you if you've ever attended a um, an Aparo Nonprofit Insights session before. Okay, so I'm going to give everyone about 10 or 15 seconds to go, up, go ahead and take this poll. This is not the poll that I anticipated. However, this is a poll that will gauge your SharePoint, um, your comfort level with SharePoint. Okay. All right, great. I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. And it uh, looks like um, pretty much everyone is uh, consensus is that we're somewhat comfortable with using SharePoint. So what I'd like to do is um, take a look at these results on the back end. Um, and I'll go ahead and let you all take a quick peek at what that looks like. 
And we've got one more poll here. Okay, now I'd like to see if you've ever attended a nonprofit insight session previously. Give you all about 10 seconds to vote there. Cool, it looks like we are 50-50. Take a quick look at those results. And uh, at this time, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hand off our webinar to our panelists, Joe and Josh. Please take it away. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. This is Joseph Miller with Microsoft. Um, I'm going to be doing a presentation today on SharePoint and Office 365. So I'm about to go ahead and share my screen. Um, if somebody could just write in the chat when you're able to see uh, the presentation, that would be great. All right, great. Uh, looks like we see it. All right, so today we'll be covering SharePoint and Office 365. Essentially, we want to cover empowering teamwork with a mobile and intelli intelligent intranet. Uh, I'm Joseph Miller, once again, Support Escalation Engineer. We also have Joshua Davis. Uh, the way this presentation is gonna work is I'm gonna go over a technical overview of SharePoint Online, uh, as well as how it integrates with Office 365. And then after we do all the technical piece, we will be doing um, some demos to give you some uh, firsthand experience. All right, let's get started. All right, so what is Microsoft 365? Well, it's a universal toolkit for teamwork. Um, with a Microsoft 365 contract, you get a full suite of products. That includes Outlook, Office Apps, SharePoint, Yammer, and Teams. Uh, Microsoft 365 meets the diverse needs of Teams with an integrated solution that is secure. We've designed Microsoft 365 to meet the unique needs of every group. For each of the categories of teamwork, Microsoft 365 includes a purpose-built application. So we have Teams. Teams is used as a hub for teamwork where groups that can actively engage and are working on core projects can connect and collaborate. Yammer for people to connect across the company, sharing ideas on common topics or interests. Outlook where teams can communicate in a familiar place and can create uh, distribution list within groups and Outlook. I'm sure most of you are familiar with Outlook. SharePoint for keeping uh, all the content at the center of teamwork, making files, sites, and all types of content easily shareable and accessible across teams. And as well as Office apps, once again, you're probably familiar with it, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, where you do most of your file editing. With these tools coming together in Microsoft 365, you get a whole, holistic solution that helps your business. What's unique about teamwork in Microsoft 365 is that all these applications are built on intelligent fabric. So you get a suite wide membership service called all O365 Groups. We're gonna go into more detail on this later, but essentially uh, when you add permission for one of these things, you get it across the entire suite. Suite wide discovery and intelligence with Microsoft Graph. Um, that's basically Power BI components for all the uh, Office 365 components and suite wide security and compliance. Um, so we'll be going over a quick overview of all these. The one that we will go in the most detail is, is SharePoint. And here you can see just based on this graph, um, at the top is the suite of products and at the bottom is what covers all those, the Microsoft Graph Security Compliance and Office 365 groups. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about Office 365 groups. Essentially, it's a member service that runs in Azure AD that connects all of the Office 365 suite. Um, if you look at the apps below, let me go ahead and highlight these. Get my pointer. Um, here are all the different apps that are available in the Office 365 suite. You got Outlook Teams, uh, Staff Hub, etc. All these utilize Office 365 groups as the member service. Um, so sort of how that works is uh, when a user creates a new group, um, they'll get a SharePoint site, they'll get an Outlook calendar, they'll get a team. And all that's controlled in Azure Active Directory, um, but it's to help with that group experience. 
um, that same group is tied across all those different applications. So when you share a file in SharePoint, you can talk about that same file over on Yammer or have a Teams discussion on that. And all of the chat that's connected to that is persistent and also kept in Outlook. Um, this is the backbone of the SharePoint Online Office 365 experience. You'll hear me mention this uh, Office 365 groups throughout the presentation. We'll be doing a demo later that sort of shows the power of this. Microsoft 365 for every type of teamwork. When deciding how to best leverage our toolkit for your team, you need to think about what type of work needs to be done and the type of conversations your team needs to have. So here on this graph, you see there's the inner loop and the outer loop. The inner loop is the people that you work on uh, regularly on your core projects. Uh, you would commonly think about this as your, your close team. Um, there's also the outer loop, uh, which is more uh, people across the company, let's say if it's finance and marketing working together, that would be two different inner loops working together, making an outer loop. So um, this is important because you need to understand which tool to leverage depending on which loop that you're in. So um, as you can see here, uh, SharePoint is kind of in the center. Uh, it holds the files, the sites, and the content, whether you're talking about inner loop or outer loop. Uh, Yammer is going to be used more for the outer loop. That's more for corporate communications, leadership connections, employee uh, communities, uh, just crowdsourcing and generally coming up with ideas, things that are more broad in its approach. Outlook is going to be used sort of between both the loops as well. Um, it, it's used for any targeted communication, so it could be, you know, uh, something that's company-wide. It could be something that's very private between two individuals. And then Teams is going to be more targeted. Uh, it can be used for outer loop work, but is more focused on inner loop. Um, and that's going to be where you're going to be discussing projects, pro product development, campaign, creation, account teams, troubleshooting, uh, that type of work. So it's important to identify, based on the type of work, what tool is important for that. All right, SharePoint and OneDrive connect the workplace with intelligent content management intranets. SharePoint and OneDrive play a special role in Office 365 by connecting the workplace with intelligent content management intranets. Today, we're going to focus on key areas where you can leverage our innovations to achieve significant benefits. Specifically, how you can share and work together inside and outside your organization through anywhere, access your content and seamless collaboration experiences, inform and engage people by connecting them with the resources that they need to do their jobs and fostering open conversations, as well as transforming your business processes by automating repetitive tasks and streamlining workflows. Um, this will also allow you to harness collective knowledge by making it easier to find information and expertise right where it's needed and encourage best practice sharing. All with the full confidence that you can protect and manage your organization's content, as well as extend and develop your SharePoint to meet your unique business needs. Also, what, that wasn't on some of the previous graphs is OneDrive with Office 365, um, very heavily related to SharePoint in terms of uh, being a file repository. Um, the main difference between OneDrive and SharePoint is that OneDrive is gonna be more of a one-to-one -one, uh, file sharing. So let's say you have a file and you're working on it and you need to make heavy edits uh, with one other colleague, uh, you would send them a OneDrive link and then they could go in and edit it as needed. Now, let's say you're working on a bigger team of people that need to edit it, 20, 25 people. Uh, you're gonna go ahead and leverage uh, SharePoint for that. You're gonna post that same file to SharePoint. Uh, users will be able then to edit that there, um, al allowing instead of having to go through a list of 25 different people to permission, you can only have to post it once on the SharePoint side. So OneDrive for Office 365 allows you to share work together on all your files. This includes your personal files shared, on, shared with you in Office 365, and you can access those files from any device, including mobile, PC, Mac, web browser, you name it. Since most of us don't work in silos, OneDrive makes it simple to share files inside or outside your organization with common sharing experience uh, that we can bring across web, desktop, mobile, uh, and inside the Office applications themselves. You can even securely share files with people that don't have a Microsoft account using email verification to prove their identity. 
Uh, we realize administrators are concerned with the risk of data leakage, so OneDrive gives them visibility to control and manage this uh, through an admin center. Um, only through OneDrive can you co-author documents using Office web apps and Office mobile apps and desktop Office applications for Windows. Uh, you can't do that with your files stored in file shares uh, or in some of our competitors like Box, Dropbox, Google Drive. Um, finding content tends to be one of the biggest inefficiencies that we have on a daily basis. Um, so we're leveraging Microsoft Graph, which is something else we'll go into more detail about in order to talk about um, the recent files that have been shared with you, recommended files based on your working relationships, basically tailoring your experience every time you use Office 365. Lastly, you can rest easy storing your files in OneDrive where files are protected by enterprise grade security and compliance. All right, SharePoint. So this is the, the main topic here. Uh, there are many types of teams and many forms of collaboration and there's no one size fits all tool for every type of collaboration. So that's why we have 365 that has a universal toolkit for collaboration, giving that type of flexibility uh, to allow your teams to work together. Every group will have unique approach on how to handle it. Some will be email centric, some will be file centric, some will be more oriented around chat. Uh, because all the groups in Office 365 are backed by SharePoint team site, all the content is gonna reside in SharePoint. And that's why this is at the heart of the Office 365 discussion. Uh, so let your group share content, knowledge, news, apps. Um, every time you create an Office 365 group, you also get a SharePoint team site. Um, collaborate on the internet and Microsoft Teams, and we offer rich web and mobile experiences. So the same SharePoint site that you create was also gonna be available on mobile, fully functional, no additional code needed or added. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the difference between OneDrive and SharePoint. Uh, I sort of highlighted on this earlier, but OneDrive for Business, um, essentially if you're creating a file for personal file share or storage, you're gonna use OneDrive for that. Uh, if you want massive collaboration, you're gonna move it over to SharePoint site. It's still gonna be stored in OneDrive for business, but now it's easily accessible by everybody that has access to that SharePoint site. Um, if you want larger collaboration, rather than your local team or something like that, something more org wide, then you're gonna use Teams or Yammer for that same collaboration experience. And here you can see uh, how, I'm just gonna go back over that graphic one more time. You see that uh, here, this is a file that you're working on and then you just move it over to SharePoint and it then becomes our file. Still the same file, but now uh, hosted in SharePoint. And all this is built with collaboration, intelligence, mobility and trust in mind. All right, so if you already have existing Office 365 sites, you can go ahead and connect uh, to Office 365 groups if you aren't using this. Um, so basically when a group is created, you get a shared inbox for conversations, that's an outlook. You also get a shared calendar, um, a planner to manage tasks, and the option to connect a team in Microsoft Teams. Um, with Microsoft Teams, you get 270 different file types that you can now easily add SharePoint pages and include uh, your team site homepage as a tab in Microsoft Teams. Um, you can promote news articles to reach people where they work. Uh, news articles already surface on site homepages on SharePoint Home and Office 365 and in SharePoint Mobile, uh, which also features notifications. Now you can promote any news article and email or in Microsoft Teams. You can also use the SharePoint News Connector to automatically post news in a channel in Microsoft Teams. So essentially, uh, you can share that same news between a SharePoint site, between Teams, uh, have it on your mobile app. Uh, so it'll be the same ex experience no matter where in the Office 365 suite that you are on, whether you're on iOS or whether you're on Android. All right, so now we're switching gears a little bit. I'm now gonna focus more, I was talking about the Office 365 suite and how it related to SharePoint. Now we're talking more about SharePoint. Um, the real value of collaboration comes to life when it's integrated with the tools people use to communicate, create and collaborate, such as Microsoft Office. It needs to be accessible from anywhere, anytime, from multiple devices that people use in their personal and professional life. It needs to be open, familiar and transparent. It needs to be simple, 
easy to use and backed by enterprise grade IT control security and compliance. And that's why SharePoint Online, which is part of Office 365 Suite, brings us together for all users. SharePoint Online delivers the powerful features of SharePoint without this associated overhead of managing the infrastructure on your own. Um, trust me, as an on-premise uh, engineer, it, it is a headache to try and manage. We take a lot of that uh, work off of you by hosting it online. Flexible management options ensure that you will still retain control that you need to meet the compliance requirements of your organization. Uh, you can purchase SharePoint in the cloud as a standalone offer or, or as part of the Office 365 suite, which is where you're going to get the most benefit out of it. All right, so this is just a bit of an overview of sort of what's all included with SharePoint. Uh, so SharePoint primarily is made up of team sites. That's where your team is going to collaborate. Uh, you got portals and publishing. That's going to be sites that are more public facing and more especially customized. And then business apps, which users are going to use to upload data and connect to external da data sources. Uh, something we'll go more into detail later. Um, what runs on top of this is Office 365 Groups, which I've discussed. Microsoft Graph, which is basically the BI components uh, that'll automatically give you some business data about the work that you're doing within SharePoint. SharePoint Framework, which is basically extensibility for SharePoint, allowing you to connect to external data sources uh, and add intelligent content, as well as security and compliance. And here's just a little bit more overview of some of the things mobile. Um, as you can see, this is the same experience. Here's the SharePoint site in the browser, and here's that same in the, uh, in the app. So it's the same site, no additional code needed, um, but easily browsable. Um, this is, these apps are on iOS, Android, uh, used to be on Windows. Windows is not a platform anymore. Um, so we have powerful publishing platform for your range of internet needs. Um, you can have news feeds, uh, you can edit document libraries, pages, lists, all from uh, no matter where you're at. And here's how SharePoint connects to uh, the rest of the suite. As you can see, Office 365 has a complete suite of products that help you elevate your business, includes end-to-end -end solutions for taking care of local collaboration, cross-site collaboration, uh, meetings, and co-authoring, and more. So uh, here you're going to have your SharePoint site. Uh, this is going to be the team site where you have most of your data located. There you're going to have a shared mailbox in Outlook. In Outlook, you're going to have attachments um, for documents that you're working on. Uh, you can also co-author with said documents over here in Office 365 Pro Plus. Uh, you can have a more general discussion company-wide about said documents or even news using Yammer. Uh, if you need a more chat-based workspace, uh, you can use Teams to leverage that. And every meeting um, about the said documents can be had within Skype. So as you see, we offer the complete end-to-end -end suite um, and all of this will have BI associated with it. All right, so I'm going to go into the team side experience and just give you an overview. For those of you that aren't as SharePoint savvy, um, sort of what a team site looks like. So we're making it super easy to navigate your internet, no matter what device, no matter where you are, full access to sites and portals that you care about most, right from the palm of your hand. Of course, the core of SharePoint is the team sites. Um, we've been making a big investment there. As I've said, um, in Office 365, every group gets a team site. A group um, is a logical separation that's just a team of people. It could be large, it could be small, just depends on how you want to divide that. SharePoint is where they're going to go to work. Um, site creation is fast, happens in about five seconds or so. Um, we're introducing a new SharePoint experience on the web and mobile across the homepage, libraries, and site analytics. Uh, the default homepage of the site will combine news, activities uh, to the team powered by Microsoft Graph to be more relevant and engaging. Um, we're also uh, made a big leap in a no-code, low-code customization application integration um, called Power Apps. 
and uh, also something else called Microsoft Flow that essentially will allow you in a very couple easy steps to make an app um, for something simple. Let's say we're talking time tracking. Um, you can take a list, uh, a SharePoint list that would be normally a time tracking and then make an app that's available on the phone. Um, as well as Microsoft Flow is basically, if anybody understands the idea of a workflow, it's automated tasks that happen based on given input. So you can say anytime a user submits a time off, it automatically gets sent to certain people for approval. All right, so first the updated team site homepage is the quickest way to find and showcase the most relevant content. Um, as you can see, this is sort of just the landing page. Um, you can see there's the news feed right here. Um, so the first thing that your users will be presented with is uh, the news for the organization, whatever you, you deem as important. Uh, likewise, you can see recent activities. So if certain files have changed, uh, everybody will be made aware of that. And same thing with the mobile. It's now simple and fast for users to create team sites and by default, every group gets full power of SharePoint online team site. All right. As you can see, you can pin, if there's more important news, you can pin it or you can have it automatically uh, draw from the feed. Um, just speaking more about the Office 365 group, every team site now is associated with Office 365 group. And automatically you can see um, the integration with Outlook. You can see uh, the different group members. If you were to click them right here, it would automatically pull up their contact card and you can instantly message them on Skype, just sort of tying that back to how connected Office 365 is. And that's just highlighting that uh, the same thing is available through mobile. Um, a little bit deprecated functionality as you don't get the uh, members in the upper left, but pretty much everything else is available. The True Heart of Team Sites is a document library. Secure location to create, share, and organize team files. This update builds on the core value people have come to depend on for years, adding a new user experience and capabilities designed to bring consistency for working on files throughout Office 365 while maintaining the full power of SharePoint document libraries. We focused on uh, helping your team to get work done the right way and highlight what's most important. Um, so this is just the modern experience. As you can see, uh, there's the sync option. You can automatically sync that with uh, your OneDrive for Business, automatically keeping that in sync. Um, you can do bulk edits. You can use uh, Flow to go ahead and connect to, let's say you have Dynamics CRM or another external data source to automatically upload that information to here and edit it. Um, you can set up alerts. Um, this is just sort of the new document library experience. And once again, same experience, no matter whether you're using phone or online. All right, we're gonna get to the internet in your pocket, speaking more about the mobile app. The first step to putting the internet in your pocket with a new SharePoint mobile app and complimentary new SharePoint Home and Office 365 experience. Both the web and mobile experience will have fresh out the box experience for company news, navigation, search, people, and alerts. We leverage the intelligence of Microsoft Graph across SharePoint Online to make this simpler and engaging. And this is sort of just what the app looks like. I demoed this on a previous slide. More screenshots of what the apps look like. Uh, you can ignore the Windows one, not there anymore. <laughs> but there's the one for iOS and there's the one for Android. And here's some additional screenshots of what this looks like. So um, here's if the user would click SharePoint, uh, this is, would be all the sites that they're following. Um, if they were to click into a site, they would come here. Um, then they would see the most recent activity. Uh, you could look up P 
people uh, and different users looking at their contact cards, um, as well as do search on documents. Um, here's what the, the back site looks like. Um, if you were to heavily customize your SharePoint site, here's more so what it would look like. Um, here's sort of the authentication prompts that you're gonna get. And here's the recent files tab. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and skip the slide. This is gonna be sort of covered later. All right, I'm just gonna do a quick demo. Uh, it's not a demo per se, it's a collection of slides, but it'll give you a better idea of the SharePoint app and home. Turn off my pointer real quick. All right, so here's some more screenshots, uh, sort of what I covered earlier. Uh, there's office, also Office 365 video. Now we can connect to Rich Video at any point, um, whether that's through YouTube or something on your intranet. More screenshots from the app, um, covered pretty much in the presentation. Uh, during the Q&A session, if we have more questions on that, we can go over this in more detail. Um, here's a look at the Power Apps. So um, this was originally a SharePoint list called Big Win. Um, basically, in a couple steps, use Power Apps to create an app. Uh, so when you force pull it up, uh, this is all information right here. Let me turn on pointer again. Populated from a SharePoint list. Uh, and you can like edit an item uh, you can see like there's the same fields that you would see in a SharePoint list, whether that's date, fulfillment status, um, and you'd get the option to approve an item all from an app. All right. Give me a second to get back to where I was in the presentation. All right, so now we're gonna be going a little bit over publishing sites. So this is the modern page authoring experience. So typically in the past, if you've used SharePoint to edit and create pages, I'm sure you've had some difficulties and it requires a very specific uh, SharePoint knowledge. Um, we've kind of simplified that to make it a lot easier. It's definitely way more drag and drop, way more user friendly. Uh, the mobile and intelligent internet pivots on modern page creation to create multimedia content like a trip report or information about a new product launch information using fluid inline and responsive page authoring experience pages are a great way to communicate and assemble information from a variety of sources we updated the page authoring experience to make it effortless and to add simple content and powerful web parts the pages you create can be shared and are a part of Microsoft Graph so that users can more easily discover these pages. And our modern pages render beautifully on screens of all size. So for example, if I were to stretch, um, let's say I had this full screen on my desktop, if I were to shrink it, it automatically auto sizes and makes everything look gorgeous. Uh, SharePoint will modernize publish portals and pages with the new responsive design that can run on the web and the new SharePoint mobile app. This will include simple branding, page layouts, editing and video support built on Azure Media. Now every team site comes with the ability to quickly build out and publish professional polished reports and pages. And you can easily add and format text, rich, rich text. So you can easily bold, uh, you can easily add graphics, it's all pretty, pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to skip this demo for now. Uh, we can go more in detail during the demo portion if that's something that you guys find value in. All right, I'm going to go over uh, business apps. 
So we know people want low code, no code declarative solutions. Uh, I'm sure some of you have done some work with browser customization, SharePoint design, et cetera. Um, we now have great third parties like Nintex and K2 uh, building solutions and we're partnering with them to do more. Uh, Power Apps is a new app creation tool that lets organizations rapidly build mobile apps that integrate um, on-premises and cloud data from Microsoft and third-party providers. Uh, Microsoft Flow is a new service that lets you pull in data, uh, data movement and processes from other applications, uh, SaaS applications, Dynamics, you name it. For SharePoint, uh, first we're letting people build custom Power Apps that bind SharePoint data and public preview now. Um, we're starting to plan the next phase of using Power App capabilities uh, to do even more great work. We think using Power Apps and Flow to mobilize your SharePoint data is a great solution. That's why we're looking forward uh, to release a Power Apps web part soon. Um, it's a big initiative that we're pushing right now. Uh, it definitely allows you to leverage your business data in ways that's more usable. Uh, so essentially, when you are modifying a list, uh, in the drop down, you'll see an option that says Power Apps. That takes you to the Power Apps Builder, and with a couple of code lines, uh, I wouldn't even call them code lines. Uh, it's simple logic. It allows you to build these different apps. And as you can see here, um, on this one, it's a Venture to Team Auto site. Uh, you can see that Launch App button. Let me go ahead and highlight that real quick. Yeah, but this is built in Power Apps and allows you to uh, check in and check out these different vehicles all from a phone app. And the last major element of the SharePoint team site we need to talk about is list. Uh, it's integrated with Microsoft Power Apps and Flow, built right there into SharePoint Online. Uh, helping you automate the team processes, especially while on the go. Great way SharePoint can be connected to a world of data sources without the great cost of time and development, as well as complexity. Uh, the potential of Microsoft Flow and SharePoint together is immense. It's a great way that SharePoint can be connected to a world of data sources. We need tools that help let us rapidly develop solutions for short-term and medium engagement with minimal impact on budgets and talents and pools dedicated to maintaining the classic line of business technology. Power Apps and Flow allow you to do that. And that's the entire mission of Power Apps. Joined with Office and all the rich business data solutions developed in the last couple of years of Office 365, uh, Power Apps lets you extend today's business data for the users of tomorrow. And a little bit more about Microsoft Flow, what I talked about it. Um, what is Flow? It's basically an enterprise software service for business users to work smarter by automating processes. Uh, those processes can be definitely uh, varying, whether that's getting an alert when a file is updated, uh, synchronizing a folder based on a current date or even a certain cause, uh, let's say, a uh, files uploaded with a certain title, you can have it then synchronized, um, organizing your data and automating the approval process. Um, we already have uh, a bunch of pre-made templates. Um, so if you go to flow.microsoft.com, you can see some of those templates, but as well, you can take those templates and customize them a bit. Uh, customize them a bit. Um, you could also just start your own uh, from scratch. Uh, if you want to do something a little bit more complex. And here uh, on the screen now is a SharePoint site, but it's been heavily customized. Um, this is a SharePoint site using a custom master page with custom navigational elements. Um, we're using a content uh, web, excuse me, a content search web part in order to pull some information um, there's also a Yammer feed. Let me go ahead and highlight that. Yammer feed directly integrated into the site. Um, as you can see, it looks great. Um, on the mobile, it would also look very similar. Um, this is just showing you the capabilities of what a fully developed site would look like.
So I'm going to go ahead and skip this demo. Um, once again, we can return to this if we find there's something of value here after we do the demo portion. Um, this is a little bit more information about graph. I discussed this uh, a bit earlier. Uh, essentially, it's just a set of modern APIs that help you leverage your business data. Across OneDrive and SharePoint, we will line Microsoft on this simple progr program map excuse me, <laughs> programmability story using graph.microsoft.com. Uh, you can leverage JavaScript, OAuth, REST, uh, webhooks, other SDKs. Uh, we have the lowest barrier to entry for third-party developers, including embracing and contributing to open source community, uh, as we've done with Office Fabric UI. Um, basically allows you to unlock the potentials of your SharePoint um, and leveraging that business data that's important. And there's also SharePoint Framework. Um, basically, it's modern client-side development. Uh, it's going to power all your experiences here on uh, SharePoint Online. Uh, also supports open source tools uh, and Java, JavaScript web frameworks. Um, that's really going to come into play more so when you're working with publishing pages, um, allowing you to use open source tooling of your choice. Uh, for more information, and we can provide this as a resource link, uh, there's a dev program that shows roadmaps as well as uh, some exciting features. And this is sort of just showing all the serv services that are powered by SharePoint. Um, OneDrive for Business actually runs within SharePoint, uh, Office 365 Video, Delve, which is going to be uh, BI components relating to people, sites, content, and what you follow, what's important. And then Office 365 Groups is kind of the uh, team management that ties it all together. All right, I'm going to do a quick blurb about security, privacy, and compliance. Um, so one of the important things uh, when talking about SharePoint Online versus SharePoint on-premise is uh, uptime. <laughs> SharePoint is a difficult product to work with on-premise, but online, we have a 9998 uh, uptime, so we're talking about high availability and global scale um, with security, privacy, compliance, and transparency all built in. Uh, we have a trust center, trust.office.265.com that goes into more about the compliance details. Um, but just know that this is highly available, high secure. Um, here's a bit about the storage overview. Um, Essentially, you don't have to worry as much um, as you're talking about on premise. You have to worry about how big is my database getting or how many users can use this environment. In online, it's not as much of a worry. Uh, we're talking about up to 25 terabytes of, of site collection storage quota. So you're going to have to do a lot of work in order to use all that space. Um, in basic uh, tenancy storage, you're going to get a terabyte. Um, off tops and for each additional user you're going to get uh, five gigs of space or sorry 0.5 of a gig of space half a gig um, which if you're a larger organization definitely scales very well our mission as a company is to help every individual and business on the planet to achieve more it's not only about the products we create but how we enable customers to get the most value out of those products so uh, we've done designed something called fast track our customer success service to help you move to office 365 smoothly and with confidence and realize your business value faster it provides you with a set of best practices tools resources excuse me and experts committed to make an experience with office 365 a success so if you're very nervous about going online, Fast Track is definitely a service I would leverage, um, especially because it's free as part of your Office 365 subscription, as long as you have a commercial uh, license with a, at least 50 seats. Um, so they'll help you envision uh, what's gonna be happening in terms of turning what you have on your on-premise business into Office 365, Office 365 experience. Yep, so just reiterating, no cost, uh, provide tools, documentation, and guidance, and we also help with planning and assistance. And that's taking your current file shares that you have, getting them onto SharePoint server, whether that's from you know Google Drive or Box.
All right, so that's the basic presentation. Um, I hope this was informational. I have some additional content that is about the basics of SharePoint. Um, we're also going to go through the demo portion of this as well now. Um, I'm going to save the this part. Um, so the appendix section here is all uh, different capabilities of SharePoint that's basic for people that may not know as much. So now I'm going to pass it over to Joshua Davis. He's going to run you through some of the demos of Office 365 to give you a better hands-on experience. Um, and then we'll return back to this. And how's it going, guys? Um, so currently, I am in the admin center here for Office 365. I'm going to first start with some demos in terms of kind of the hierarchy from Office 365 Admin Center. Um, we'll progressively move on to the SharePoint piece as well, showing the Admin Center specific to SharePoint, and then ultimately going into some of the end user functionality from a SharePoint perspective. So currently we're in the Office 365 Admin Center. Here you can pretty much kind of manage all your users. Um, you can manage the Office 365 groups here. Um, you can manage resources such as your conference rooms. Let's say you have a company car or your company machines. You can manage those guys here as well. And the bulk of what you're going to be using this admin center for is ultimately getting to the place, uh, this specific admin center for your office application that's respective to your company. So right now, um, we're going to go into these admin centers a little bit later, but we're ultimately going to start by pretty much adding a user um, into the actual Office 365, Office 365 backend, and then we'll go ahead and create a group with that same user. So we're in the active user phase here. We're going to add a new user. All right, so let's see. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a user, Warren Buffett here. And I think because of the screen share, bear with me a second, but it's lagging just a bit for the demo portion, but it should speed up a little bit here, hopefully. Yeah, let's just go ahead and put Warren here. So when we add a specific user to Office 365, um, we have to kind of grant them access to the actual applications as well. So currently I'm turning on the license that gives them access to pretty much the various Office Suite components that are, in pro are comprised in that E3 agreement there. So we've given the user some access to some apps. We're gonna go ahead and add the user. User was added. We'll go ahead and send in email and close. So now we're going to go ahead and add that same user and create a new group with him. So we're going to go to groups here. These are all the current groups. We can manage those here, of course. Um, but for the purpose of the demo, I'm going to proceed to adding a new group. And we'll add our buddy Warren to this group as well. So. Let's say this is going to be our it's going to be our finance group. Group side group ID is just going to populate. That's going to be finance. Here um, we can pretty much kind of dictate who can see the group, um, and then we're going to select our owner. I'm going to go ahead and go with my account. Now the group is being created. Now, as Joe mentioned in the presentation, while this group is being created, we're now getting a SharePoint team site being provisioned for this group. Um, there's a Microsoft Teams team that's actually being created that we can pretty much kind of add to later. Um, there's an Outlook calendar uh, and collaboration pretty much components that are added during this provisioning phase as well. So we're gonna go ahead and close this. So we've just successfully created this finance group. So now we're actually gonna go and see 
about that team site that was created during the provisioning of that group. So right now we're gonna basically go to the interface for the end user. This is gonna be your typical user here. Um, he's gonna go into SharePoint once he selects his application. And because I am a member of that group, I can see all the sites, but I can now see a team site named Finance that was created during the provisioning of that group. So let's go ahead and browse to the team site. So everything is created for you here. Um, I'm gonna get back to permissions, but permissioning is based off of your group membership. If you're an owner in the group, you're an owner to the site. If you're a member of the group, you're a member of the site. So we're gonna come back to this pretty much site later, but I do wanna show you how you can also pretty much create a group from SharePoint and it will also, you can create a team site from SharePoint and it will create a group in the Office 365 admin. So we created a group from the Office 365 admin, which then created our SharePoint site. If we were to be in SharePoint and create this team site here, this would ultimately create an Office 365 group back to the admin center. So let's say we wanna do developers now. Developers have their own site and you can see here it's attempting to verify if that group alias is available um, and if we were to click next here then it would create pretty much a new Office 365 group here um, since we have the backing team site. So I do want to show you pretty much the alternative to a team site which is a communication site. Um, a communication site differs from a team site in that it's really used to create an aesthetically pleasing platform to display content, whereas the team site is really gonna be used for the heart of your collaboration, um, collaborating on documents, pushing towards project initiatives, um, managing your tasks here. So I do wanna show you pretty much the difference between that team site we created and then an additional communication site because there's varying, uh, there's a drastically different kind of user interface for both of those sites here. So this is a communication site. Um, this is pretty much kind of has that tile interface that ties into the whole mobile device um, ecosystem which we're in. I and mean, it's a consistent experience across both your desktop and your mobile devices. Um, so I do wanna show you, this is kind of a cool piece that I like here. Um, if we just kind of adjust the browser here, it will always pretty much kind of scale and give us the best experience here. So if we wanted to pretty much kind of impersonate that mobile device, that's really all we would have to do to see how pretty much our users are actually kind of viewing that list from their mobile devices. Team site differs um, in that it's really just like I said, it's for the heart of the collaboration. So during this piece, if we go to the conversation tab within our team site for finance, uh, where me and that user Warren Buffett reside, this is gonna take us to, out to Outlook. So from Outlook, um, it shows you all of your groups here. Um, and we are specifically have our own group here that we can kind of share new updates in terms of uh, internal policies. If there's kind of new documents we wanna share here, we can share them here as well. And anytime we add a file in one spot, being Outlook, being SharePoint, being OneDrive, it's gonna be consistently across every other Office application as well. Um, so if we were to say, you know, share files here, still within Outlook, but if we were to add a file here, this is actually going to show in our backing pretty much document library within the SharePoint team site as well. And I'm actually gonna do a later demo of where we're gonna sync a library and then we're gonna come in here and actually see the files that reside. So I'll get back to this piece. Now, now that we have a site, um, I do want to ultimately focus on um, the permissions for the site which you know, it can, can get pretty tricky if you want to restrict access and not really just have those two buckets that we can control through the group. So with the Microsoft Office 365 group, um, we can adjust, let's say this finance group here, we can add access to that SharePoint team site by pretty much adding new owners, adding new members. Well, what happens if we wanna get a lot more granular than that? Um, we can do that, and we can do that through pretty much the finance site, site permissions. Mm -hmm. 
and waiting for the ribbon to load here. Okay, so now we can pretty much go to site permissions. And again, um, these are the two generic buckets that we can kind of control through the Office 365 Admin Center. Um, and again, if we want to get more granular, we can go to the advanced permissions. Um, here, you can pretty much change the default levels of permissioning for the groups that are created out of the box for you. Um, you can go to your permission levels and we can actually change full control. Let's say we want full control to be a little bit more restrictive. Um, we can actually adjust the full control by clicking on that permission level and then coming in here and adjusting these settings to your liking. If we want to add a completely new permission level, we can do that as well. So we can get really granular here and say, um, you know, we only want to allow someone to approve items and create alerts once they've done approving. That is pretty much, it will automatically kind of give us the view items, the edit items, but that's solely because it's needed in order to approve. So that's the least restrictive just to do those two actions. We can create that permission level and assign that to new users that are added to the group as they pretty much kind of are, as they trickle into the environment and to the corporation there. Now along the lines of permissions as well, I want to switch to a different site but I wanna show you guys how easy it is to actually share a site out or to share a file out with someone that's not in your organization. Um, I think they nailed it here in terms of how seamless this is and I'll demonstrate that. So first, this isn't a by default setting. You actually have to go to your SharePoint Admin Center, you have to go to your site, and then once you pretty much have your site selected, you specifically have to enable the option to pretty much allow anonymous access and it looks like I have to refresh my page here. And that's because of the security validation. So if we go to our Paro site, we go to sharing, we'll see all our options for pretty much kind of sharing this content. Um, we're going to pretty much allow us to share some of the items with users that are not in our respective domain our respective company. So then I'll go back to the site here. And I'll show you it's just very simple as share a parl test site. Now I can put, this is not a real email, at fakedomain.com. I can go to show options here and I can make this as permissive or restrictive as possible. Um, so let's say we're only gonna give it read We'll click the share button. I think that's clicked there. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on there, but I think it's the actual kind of screen sharing to go with the actual kind of tenant. But once you click share, it shares out and they'll share out that test site. Um, ironically, the cancel works. But if we go to a document library, we can do the same with one respective file as well. And we can go once again, fake user at notarealdomain.com. It will let us know that user is not a member of your organization but it still will send out the email link. Now that external user got the email about the document, he can pretty much work on that document there. Now from this demo here from permissions, um, I'm gonna move to kind of how easy it is to actually sync um, your local files with the actual SharePoint document library. Um, very seamless. So we can go back to our finance site that we created. I'm gonna to go to the documents library And I am going to sync. 
Now and this is pretty much opening my local OneDrive client. So currently there's nothing in there. So let's say I go ahead and open another file explorer. Go to the desktop. I'm just gonna drop some demo docs inside of my OneDrive here. So during this OneDrive here, once that status is pretty much kind of verified, we should go back here. We can now see that our files are now synced that pretty much quick. Um, and in here we have a couple files and we have a nested folder just to kind of show you how quick and, and seamless this really works. And it does maintain the integrity of your file structure. Now from here, I'm gonna show you pretty much how easy it is to also create a list. I and mean, then ultimately to use that Power Apps capability that Joe touched on during the presentation of just how, how seamless and how fast it is to make your list into an actual application um, that you, everyone can use on their mobile devices. Um, and it really doesn't use any code whatsoever. So currently here, uh, what I have is a demo list. This is basically um, a list I created for the purpose of saying, I want to submit out of office requests to this list. Um, I can hook up flow to say, when I submit a new item to this list, a new request, um, I want you to send an item, send a task to the approver to either say, okay, you can approve it or you can. So I'm gonna add a new field and this, I, I love this interface. It's very easy to add columns um, within this Office 365 SharePoint environment. So let's say reason for oof, why are we going to be out of office? Single line, we'll save it. Add a new item. Let's go ahead and make Joe the approver. Vacation. So we now have two list items. Now it's gonna be as simple as we click the Power Apps, we create an app.
So we can see here with no code, it's pretty much kind of doing everything in the background for you here. Um, the background, you have a lot of options to customize this. We can make this aesthetically as pleasing as possible. Um, we can pretty much kind of change the columns in terms of what are being displayed, but just for the purpose of the demo and time, I'm going to go to pretty much the uh, kind of presentation mode of the app so we can really see how it works. Um, so right now it's filtered off of the wrong column. It's filtered off of the reason. Um, that's that newest column that we provided. Um, but by clicking on each value, you can really see, okay, this is the second request, what the dates are, who's the approver. You can see all of that from this mobile interface. So we can now pretty much kind of publish this app out um, within your organization. Every user can have this on their mobile device. And just like that, we can now pretty much kind of submit time off requests from the mobile device just through the app here. And kind of with no code, we can see that creation of the app. It did kind of spin for a little bit, but that was all of two to four minutes max that we just created an app, no code. Um, again, we can kind of customize that pretty heavily, but that when we have a tutorial and it actually links you to tutorials on how to do just that. Um, and again, that doesn't have too much overhead as well in relation to how you how we previously thought of creating apps. Now, the last phase that I wanted to do for this demo was really kind of highlight the consistent experience um, across your office suite, not just SharePoint, um, with that same finance group that we created. So I'm going to come back to the home page for the end user. This is where he kind of accesses all his office client apps. Let's go ahead and open Outlook. So we'll now see our finance group and all the other groups that we're associated with. Um, so if we click on our finance group here, So if we pretty much are emailing this finance alias, all communication is going to be tracked here. Um, if we add a new user to the group, um, the highlight of how this is better than the previous concept of a distrib distribution list is, you know, we add a new user to the distribution list. He doesn't get to see all the past activity, the past emails. Here, everything stays here. So if we add a new user, he can see from the, the dawn and the beginning of this group, he can see everything that everyone else can see. Um, so if we were to go to shared files, I do want to highlight how this kind of ties back to that same document library file sync that we did. Okay, so these are all the files that were included in that file sync. Um, and I'll go to, let's see. Let's go back to the finance list. So we had a folder here within that folder, had two files, and then we had another folder, which had a third file. So if we go back to the group here, those are all three files. Um, it pulls it from every subfolder. We now have a repository in our Outlook that we can kind of use if we weren't already in the SharePoint interface. Um, it switches back and forth seamlessly. If we add an attachment to the communication channel um, in Outlook, then as well, that new item that was in that attachment will then be added to your document library just for your finance team site. I do want to show you the Teams piece as well and just how easy it is to integrate a new team based off of the same group. So it's semi-created already for you in that you really just have to actually add it to the screen and, and join it there. Um, so it, there's already a reference that we'll see quickly here when we try to create or join a new team. There'll be a reference to our finance site. It's just not showing on the left pane yet. So we just created finance, we'll choose our team.
and just like that again. So the conversation files, everything is really, it's still setting up here, but everything is going to be consistent in terms of the experience of what's in SharePoint, what's in Outlook, what's in Teams for your group. So that's really kind of the, to bring it home, the real purpose of the Office 365 groups. It's really just to have one consistent identity across the whole Office suite. Um, I hope I've highlighted that in a great degree during this demo, um, but now I would say we can open this up for questions and um, we can take it from there. Great. Thank you so much, Joe and Joshua, for walking us through all of that and giving us some demos. Um, <clears throat> here on the Aparo side, we do have some questions. Um, however, I will uh, wait just a moment to see if anyone else types anything into the Q&A before we um, move forward. I do have, actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and go to the one question that we had come through on the um, chat box. Um, and it was about, um, let's see, from Tricia, um, would the team site be appropriate for a board of directors with 20 plus um, that work outside of our nonprofit? Um, do, you, do you have any comments on that and the uh, possibility of removing them from access? I can go ahead and chime in on that. This is Joe. Um, so in terms of a board member leaving, yes. So the way access is controlled is basically as long as there's somebody always higher than you, then you can always remove them. So there's going to be, uh, when you make a site collection, a site collection administrator, uh, probably not a board member, possibly a board member, but there's a, more than likely going to be multiple. Uh, they can always remove access from that person. Likewise, if for some reason, somehow, even all the site collection administrators got uh, removed, you could always contact us to have us remove uh, said user. But yes, there, there is a way to remove them. As for would a team site be appropriate for a board of directors, I think it always depends on the type of work that they will be doing. Um, I would say for the board of directors, you definitely have to keep security in mind. Uh, you'd have to lock down that site pretty heavily. But I think, I mean, as long as they're doing collaborative work uh, with documents, I think a team site would be a good fit. Uh, Josh, anything you want to chime in on that? Yeah, I would just add on, kind of uh, touched on it during the demo, just the ease of adding people outside or internal. Um, so honestly, I think the team site is going to be a great use case, just like Joe said, for any collaboration, internal or external. It really just comes down to fine tuning the permissions um, to get to a level that you're comfortable with. Great. Thank you, too. Um, we have another attendee that's wanting to know how and where is SharePoint backed up? So the group itself is backed up in Azure Active Directory. SharePoint, it's pretty much, it's all running within the tenant, our tenant space. So we don't really have too many hands on kind of like the SQL backing, quote unquote, that would kind of correlate to the on-prem version. We don't really get to touch that, but all of that's handled by us internally. I don't know exactly how long of backups we keep. I know there is some form, but uh, with it being online, you don't have to really worry about disaster recovery scenarios. Um, it's, uh, I haven't heard any scenarios of, you know, a SharePoint online site being wiped out or anything like that. The thing is we host all of it and we, we back that all up. So even if I think theoretically, if there was something that were to happen, we, we'd have, you know, database backups from, I'm not exactly sure how long we keep back, but a certain time period for sure. So the backups are going to be run continuously. Um, so you can think about if your tenant is a part of the larger Microsoft ecosystem, um, everyone's tenant is, is in there. Um, it's kind of, I, I would feel a little secure there in that if your site's affected, you're not the only one, which would be a very, very big issue for us. So with that in mind, we do tons of continual backups, making sure we have a great sync point in the event of disaster recovery but I have not heard of anything regarding disasters um, with the cloud, just because it, it really is optimized to be able to handle tons of data, tons of content, tons of size in terms of terabytes um, at, a, at a very kind of fraction of a second that we're used to. Great, thank you. And um, quickly before we move on to the next question, um, can you help us uh, briefly understand the difference between on-prem and uh, online? Yeah, so I used to turn on-prem a couple times. Uh, that means on-premise, that's the difference between uh, having some servers locally with SharePoint installed on them, all your files stored locally as opposed to stored, uh, quote unquote, in the cloud, which would be online and hosted by Microsoft. 
Great, thank you. Um, the next question. Is, go I just ahead. Want to add on a little bit there. Um, it's very important to note that most of the stuff, including the Power Apps, um, the stuff that we're really doing here for the presentation for SharePoint Online, a lot of that's never or may not ever actually make it to the on-prem um, version of SharePoint. So it, I do want to kind of leave with, yeah, the heart of the innovation will always lie with the Office 365 piece. Great, thank you. Um, next question is, is SharePoint and OneDrive HIPAA compliant? Can you speak to anything on that? So we have a uh, trust center. If you, uh, I forget the exact URL. I think it's o three sixty five dot trust microsoft dot com. But uh, if you search the o three sixty five trust center, all the information re regarding compliance is there. I believe it is, but I I wouldn't take that for face value. I would just go on the website and check to be sure because it's not something that I've had to personally look up. Great, thank you. And we, um, we're going to provide some resources at the end uh, that uh, you can follow up with the rest of the attendees on. Um, I'll be sure to include that there as well. Great, thank you. Um, I was going to offer um, that that exact uh, resource to everyone as we leave, so that'll be great. Um, next question uh, from Paul Fisher. When you synchronize a file in SharePoint with a file in your regular file structure, do they continue to be synchronized regardless of where they're edited from? Yes. So if we're co-authoring Joe's on a different location, um, if he's editing that same version of that file from his machine, um, that will ultimately kind of sync with the SharePoint library, which will then sync back to my local client. So all his edits will make it to my local OneDrive folder. Assuming that you have the OneDrive sync set up. That is correct, yeah. Okay, um, and can you, uh, on that note, can you talk about um, working together synchronously on files? Like, what are the limitations and what are the possibilities of that? So, hold on, let me touch on Paul's. Um, and said, he said, assuming what is set up, um, we're talking about the sync. So, I'm not sure if you remember, I can quickly share my screen again if you don't. Um, it's basically when I hit that sync option to sync my document library with my local OneDrive, um, that's not by default. You do have to pretty much kind of just click that sync button. So that is essentially the setup. Audrey, could you repeat that last question one more time? Sure. I just wanted to touch on um, when, uh, when we want to collaborate on, say, a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet, can you talk about what's possible there and what the limitations of that are? So in terms of co-authoring, um, it is very, very dynamic. Um, I think with it being online and it really utilizing the cloud in relation to the on-prem setup, um, it's going to be a lot faster in terms of just how quick those changes are made. So if Joe's, let's say, typing a seven letter word, I honestly expect to start seeing that word by letter four. Um, I, I, it's just that quick in terms of how fast everything's syncing over. Um, limitations, most, if not all of those have been removed um, with the Office 365 and the SharePoint online space. Um, in terms of kind of size, in terms of uh, amount of content, um, I can't really think of a barrier that we could possibly run into um, just purely because of the sheer kind of computational power we have with being in the cloud. Uh, to add a little bit onto that, so there's the real time, which is the co-author. Uh, if you have a Word document, you can easily see when somebody else opens the document, you get a notification in the upper right saying, other person is editing the document, and you see the changes real time. There's also the not real time, uh, when you go to a document, you'll see the different versions of the document they have. So you can take you can take a look at a previous version just to see what edits they made, or take a look at any of the other versions from whatever date. Uh, also, you can click on that user's name, and then you can chat with them about said thing through Skype. Um, so definitely a bunch of different choices, whether that's real time or not real time. Likewise, uh, on the SharePoint site, you'll be able to see all the versions as well. Great, thank you. Uh, we do have a few more here from Aparo, um, and I'll keep the questions um, rolling from anyone else who wants to enter them into the chat box or the Q&A box. Um, can you talk about best practices 
for file structures in SharePoint? Is there um, a way to make everything clean as far as naming conventions? And also, um, a second part of that question is how to keep the um, how to keep SharePoint easily functioning. Is there a way to archive old files? All right, I want to tackle the uh, naming structure uh, first. So I would say there's not anything within SharePoint that shows you or automates the process of naming files. Um, I think that's something that our Fast Track Center can help organize the business process around, but that's really gonna matter what your business is doing uh, and why. Uh, so that's definitely sort of a, a learned approach there. What was the second part of that question? Uh, yeah, so the, the second part of that question um, was, is there, um, it, for organizations that have multiple years of files potentially, or um, just, many, many files. Is there a best, uh, best practice for archiving? Yes, so what we can do is they have what's called retention policies. Um, so we can basically, after a specified date that you choose, we can say move this respective file from one library and then kind of put it into an archive place um, to kind of clean up some of the space and to clean up, clean up your list so it just doesn't kind of get filled with millions of items over the years. Great, thank you. And you kind of determine um, all the parameters there as well in terms of when to send it there, um, where to send it to type of deal. Great. Um, quickly, could you talk about how Yammer is beneficial for teams and for organizations? Yeah, so Yammer is, think about it as more of a corporate-wide corporate -wide communication. So it's more for, uh, at least that we use it here, it's if we're gonna have uh, a broad discussion around a topic uh, that we want input from many different sources and many different teams. Uh, for example, uh, I'm trying to think of the last Yammer post I saw. Uh, one was about uh, the Microsoft Ignite event and it was just feedback on the stuff that was presented. And so there were several different conversations talking about what were cool presentations, uh, feedback on the actual event itself, uh, what we'd like to see next year, things like that. So I, I think it's more for corporate wide or large team conversations rather than things that are specific around a particular document or business process. So to try to tie that to the demo, um, I kind of created the finance group that was with me and that user we created, Warren Buffett. Um, then ultimately, let's say we have a developer's team site, we have a HR team site. Um, if let's say that we have a new CEO of the company, that's something that needs to be distributed to all three of those groups. Um, Yammer would be the great place to kind of get that discussion going there. Um, so all the groups can more or less kind of chime in in one cohesive spot. Great, thank you. Um, I do have one more question on my list before we um, meet any other, see if there are any other questions out there. Um, are we able to open Outlook and write an email and then attach something from SharePoint um, directly from the email as an, as an attachment instead of, you know, um, opening the document in SharePoint and then sharing it that way? So you said attach? Could, could you repeat the beginning of the question? So, yeah, are we able to attach a file from SharePoint Okay, so like you, Outlook. yeah, for sure. So if you ultimately wanted to kind of basically you can one use your SharePoint library, you can sync that to your as like a map drive within your Windows Explorer. So you can really use that as your document repository that way there. That's probably the most efficient way to do it. Um, if you map your document library in Windows Explorer, it's just a map drive, um, essentially then you can go ahead from the office client. When you go to your attach file, you'll just browse that location. Sort of just adding to that, um, anytime that you send an email in a group that has a SharePoint site, it'll automatically be archived into that SharePoint site. So uh, let's say you send an email and you have a Word document attached. Uh, if you go to your SharePoint document library for that team, there will be a folder called email attachments and that uh, whatever Word document you sent will be uh, archived there. Cool, thank you. 
Um, we do have one other question uh, about that. Are we able to drag and drop from SharePoint to email? That I don't know offhand, to be completely honest. I haven't tried it. I believe so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Okay, I am looking around here at my Aparo team to see if we have any other questions um, from in our office that might be good. Um, and I'm going to go here to the field. I don't see any other questions coming through the chat box or the Q&A. Um, my chat box may not be working right now, so if you have any questions that haven't been answered, please pop those into the Q&A. Um, I'll give everyone another minute or so to, uh, to go through those. Speaking a little bit about the drag and drop again, um, I know you can drag and drop into SharePoint libraries. So if you have like a Word document on your desktop, you can drag that, drag and drop that into a SharePoint uh, document library itself. From SharePoint to Outlook, I'm not exactly sure. So right now okay. I have that test lab open um, and no, you can't. So okay. I'm in pretty much one browser. I'm in my SharePoint document library. I have Outlook open. I'm trying to just browse and send them over. It doesn't leave. It doesn't leave. Okay. Uh, we do have a question about getting a copy of this PowerPoint to reference in the future. And uh, yes, we will be able to share. Um, we will be able to share a recording of this presentation um, later on, and we'll also share some resources and a follow-up email to everyone uh, from Aparo. Um, and another question that came in is, are there built-in SharePoint integrations with external uh, CREMs, so um, Salesforce? Can you two speak on that? I missed the very end of that question. Uh, are there built-in SharePoint integrations with external CREMs, Salesforce? Yes. So like with Microsoft Flow, we can pretty much kind of integrate. Um, they have a wide ver variety of APIs we can really link to, but we can link to um, anything as far as, like you said, we can do pretty much kind of Twitter, we can do Salesforce, it can be both social, it could be kind of business processes like business connectivity services. Um, there are a wide variety of items we really can tie into with SharePoint. So if we have like cool, that list, for example, we can kind of in flow, we can create a task to say, when a new list item in SharePoint is created, do such and such in Salesforce, um, that capability is there through flow. Okay, uh, we've got about three more minutes, so I'm going to allow um, just another minute or so for questions to trickle in before we close down. Okay, I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and begin to close down here. Um, I want to thank uh, our panelists so much, Joe and Josh, for uh, taking the time this morning and walking us through all of this. Your um, demos and the presentation were amazing. So thank you very much. And all the panelists, or sorry, all the attendees who came today um, and asked some really cool questions. We really appreciate your participation. and. Um, I also want to thank Lisa over at Microsoft who helped me collaborate with me and get all this together. And um, again, thank you all for your time. Um, and what to expect next from us, um, we're hoping to here at Aparo release some other um, nonprofit insight sessions um, in the coming months. So please look for that coming, coming from us in email. Um, and from here, again, we will be um, sharing some resources and sharing a recording of this webinar so you can revisit that with other teammates who weren't able to attend today. Um, I do have a quick ending poll that I'm going to open here, uh, and I'm going to pop that open right now, just to see if anyone feels like, hey, maybe I've learned a little bit more and have a, just a different comfort level with SharePoint. And I have about 10 seconds. Let everyone vote there. 
got about 50% of our attendees voting. I'm expecting we Great. made everybody experts, right? <laughs> <laughs> you did, you did. Um, now we've switched from a few that were in the not at all comfortable range back to uh, most, the consensus is that folks are somewhat comfortable and now we have a few that are very comfortable. So thank you all for uh, polling with us there. Um, let's see if I have anything else on my checklist to mention before we close down. Um, there will be a survey popping up at the end um, I really hope that you guys take the time to pop into the Survey Monkey and respond to that. It's going to help Aparo uh, to create some other ideas um, about potentially continuing webinars or um, some other nonprofit insight series that we'd like to put together. Um, and again, we just really welcome your feedback on that survey for how this webinar went today. Um, and Joe and Joshua, thank you so much for your time. Um, do you two have anything else before we close down? Nope, nothing for me. Thank you for having us. Yeah, definitely hey, want to my say pleasure. thank you for sure. Um, definitely was a great experience. If anyone has any other questions, as previously stated, um, if you guys direct them to Aparo, we'll definitely be happy to answer those. Um, and in addition to that, um, just kind of a, as a parting gift, my go-to resource in terms of just staying on top of all the functionality, how everything connects, is the Microsoft Office 365 YouTube channel. Um, so if you're kind of more of a visual learner, you like to kind of see the, the presentations and the tutorials, I would think that'd be a great resource to get started. And we'll provide the link to that as well. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Well, everyone can expect a follow-up email from uh, us at Aparo in uh, the next day or so with all of those uh, links and resources. So thank you all for your attendance and have a great day. Joe and Josh, thank you so much. I oh, appreciate it. You're welcome. See you, team. Bye-bye.